Hi YouTube! So here I am with a new Linux kernel module programming tutorial. As you can see here, I have connected a push button to a GPIO of my Raspberry Pi. And today I want to write a Linux kernel module uh, which will generate an interrupt every time I push the button and then will call an interrupt service routine to handle the interrupt. So here I am connected to my Raspberry Pi over SSH and I'm already in my Linux drive tutorials folder. And inside this folder I have a lot of Linux kernel modules I've already written and here I will create a new one for our interrupt. Of course I will share my sources with you over GitHub so if you need the source code of Linux kernel module you can just download my repository and use it. Here in this folder we have the sources for a minimal Hello World Linux kernel module and I will use this for, today, for a base for today's video. So just let me copy it and I will create a new folder called 11 GPO interrupt. Let me cd into my new folder and inside here you can see a make file for building the module and a source file for our module and I will rename it from my module.c to gpioirq.c and now I have to change the name here in the make file as well to be able to compile it later. Okay, so now let's let's open it up and here you can see the source code for a simple hello world Linux kernel module which just prints out hello kernel if it's loaded into the kernel and goodbye kernel if it's loaded from the kernel. And we will modify it a little bit so we can use it for our interrupt generation. The first thing I do is I will change the module description to a simple Linux kernel module for a GPIO interrupt. And now I have to add some includes. As you want to use GPIOs, I have to include linux slash gpio.h and as I want to use interrupts, I have to include linux slash interrupt.h. Here in our init function, we have two things to do. We have to set up the GPIO and we have to set up the interrupt. And here I will change this to um, GPIO IRQ um, loading module. And if we reach the button here, I will print done. Okay. And set up the GPIO is the easier part because I've already made a video about how to use GPIOs in the Linux kernel module. And now we'll just open the source file of this kernel module again and I will use it for and I will just copy the initialization code out of it. So here we have the initialization code. I will just take it and copy it in here and close this file. So here we, we are requesting our we are requesting GPO 17, which is the GPO I've connected the push button to. And in case we could not um, request it because a module is already using it, I would print out error, cannot allocate GPO 17, and I will return minus one here. And here we are setting the direction of GPO 17 to input. And in case this doesn't work here, I will print out error cannot set GPO 17 to input. Then I will free my GPIO. It's a function GPO free and then I will return minus one. Okay, so much for the GPO. Now let's talk about the interrupt. You have to understand um, how interrupts generally work. So on the Raspberry Pi chip you have an interrupt controller. To this controller, all the possible interrupt sources like GPIOs or IPs like the UART IP, the SBI IP, the I2C IP, and everything which can have an interrupt um, are 
root um, are rooting a pin to it, and if the pin goes high or low, um, the interrupt controller can trigger an interrupt. And for this, we need to find out to watch um, input of the interrupt controller GPO17 is mapped to. So the first thing is I will declare a global variable. Variable contains um, pin number of interrupt controller to which GPO17 is mapped to. And I will use an unsigned integer variable for it, and I will call it interrupt number. Now I have to find out the number, and I can use the function GPO to IRQ to find out to which interrupt number GPO17 is mapped to. Okay, then we have to declare a function, an interrupt service routine, and this function should be called when the interrupt is triggered. Okay. And it has to be from it has to have the return well a return value of the type IRQ handler t and we can give it any name I will choose GPO IRQ handler and it needs the following arguments. The first one is the interrupt number because you can use the same interrupt handler for multiple interrupts and over the interrupt number you can you see what interrupt has triggered our yeah, interrupt service routine. The second argument is a pointer to a device ID, which we won't use, but you can use it to determine which device causes the interrupt. And the last argument we won't use too, it's from the type struct um, pt rex rex, and it could contain some hardware specific registers and it could be used for debugging, but as I already have mentioned, we won't use it here. And all we will do in our interrupt service routine is just print out a message. Interrupt was triggered, triggered, and ISR was called. And that's it. So the last thing we have to do is to return. We have successfully handled our interrupt, and we can do it by returning IRQ handled. If during handling of the interrupt an error occurred, normally you would have more code in it. And if an error occurred here, you could signalize it by returning IRQ none, but in our case, this shouldn't happen. <laughs> okay, so now all we have to do is we have to request the interrupt and map the interrupt to our interrupt service routine. And we can do this by using the method request interrupt needs the following arguments. The first one is the inter uh, interrupt number which should trigger the interrupt. The second is the pointer to our interrupt service routine. Then the next one is um, on which on which event our interrupt should be triggered. For example, should it be triggered on a rising edge, on a falling edge, or on both? In our case, I will just use the rising edge to trigger our interrupt. Okay, then we can set up a name. This name will um, appear in the file proc interrupts. I will show you it in a second. Then we could pass a device ID, a pointer to device ID, but as we won't use it, I would just pass a null here. And if this function return a value not equal to zero, an error occurred. Okay, error cannot 
channel to request request interrupt number and you let me just print out the interrupts number I will freeze the GPO and then return minus one here but if we came so far everything worked and here I will print GPO 17 is mapped to IRQ number okay now we're almost done but if we request some resources we have to clear our resources in our um, exit function And what we have to do here is we have to free our GPIO. And we have to free our interrupt. For this we can use the function free IRQ. We have to pass the number of the IRQ and a pointer to our um, device ID. But as we won't use it, I can pass a null pointer here. And that's the source code for a simple Linux kernel module using a GPIO interrupt. Now let's try to compile it and see how much mistakes I have made. Okay, this takes quite long. Oh, I haven't made a mistake. So we were successful. We were successful in compiling it. So now let's load it to our kernel. Okay, and let's look at the kernel's lock. So we can see GPO 17 is mapped to IRQ number 167. And if we look at the proc interrupts file, we can see all interrupts here. And down here we have our custom interrupt. From our module. Okay, so now I will push the button once and let's look at the kernel's lock again. So we can see here our interrupt was triggered several times but I've already pressed the button once. What happened? Okay, the reason for this is because we have a bouncing problem. Um, the contact from the button to um, my board here is not really good and this button, if you press it once, it will uh, you it will generate more impulse pulses. So this is a problem here. But our software is working correctly. If we would debounce our um, button here, it would be better. But I have shown you the interrupt is working. And now let's remove our module. Okay. So that's how to write a simple Linux kernel module um, with a GPO interrupt. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.